We're looking at Pentecost and trying to wrap that up with um, confirmation uh, service. And I thought we would look at the three promises that um, our three, uh, our four confirmation candidates have to make, and you have to make a promise as well. So the first one is, uh, all right, I will commit you to worship. Now, that's a picture of myself in Ghana in 20, 2009, uh, 12 years ago, and uh, that was at the, the 7 o'clock service in the morning, um, and then had a 9 o'clock one as well afterwards. So that was the 7 o'clock, and I, I preached at that service uh, in the cathedral right next to the prison in Kumasi. So um, interesting location, really. Uh, but worship, and I, I love about the um, Africans and, and the Asians as well. They're always so colourful, aren't they? Um, and Because I always look so drab and boring. I just wear a little yellow daffodil just to brighten myself up. Um, I mean, I could wear a pink suit, I suppose, or a yellow suit. Uh, but that would look a bit strange, wouldn't it, in Kempston? Not in Mutton, but in Kempston. <laughs> but we ought to be a bit more colourful in how we dress, shouldn't we, maybe? Um, or, or authentic to Kempston style. But, um, and I love the hats as well that the African women wear. They're so, isn't it? It's lovely to see all that colour and exuberance. Um, so that, And the congregation, remember, it'd be quite formal with him singing... And then about halfway through, the band would strike up. And we talk, when we're talking about halfway through, we're talking about 45 minutes to an hour. And then the bishop would be dancing or moving, and the whole congregation would erupt in worship, and then it all calmed down for the sermon and communion. But it was just an incredible experience. Uh, and I'm sure it happens here, doesn't it? <laughs> no erupts in worship and the sense of God. So, and that's the first thing I will commit is we will commit ourselves. Will you commit yourself to worship? So it's not just about the, the candidates. It's, it's always all of us, isn't it? And on the way from Kempston, I drove past a cathedral. It's called Little. <laughs> and the Little Cathedral, people had turned up quite early, earlier than Kempston East. Some of you probably just got in before half past 10. They were there at 10 o'clock and the car park was fairly full, queuing up for the little. And the, the thing is, you have to pay to get out a little, don't you? you? You know, you have to pay to get out the checkouts. Here, you don't have to pay to get out. It's free, isn't it? So worship, whether we're worshipping at Little or Kempston East. Um, it says Psalm 92... It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at the night. And so worship, and it doesn't really matter. And we went to Egypt and they worshipped on a Friday because obviously it's a Muslim country. And the churches were packed out top and bottom, you know, uh, the children and everything. So we, Sunday is when we worship and, and it doesn't really matter what time. The key thing is that God's got hold of our attention, isn't it? And that interaction between heaven and earth that happens here uh, in, or in every place of worship that's scattered around the world today. And the diversity of worship, if we look back in our lives, I don't know if I've worshipped on the sandy beach at 8 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock near a windmill in Thaxted. Um, Tamils, with Tamil-speaking Christians in London, with Pakistani Christian asylum seekers in Sri Lanka in, in, in their room, and that was very emotional, with a new, in a new church in a youth centre or 6,000 young people um, at the Methodist Youth Celebrations, you know, they used to have MAYC in London, when the Pentecostal church singing choruses and then having my sermon translated, into Italian. I've worshipped with two people and a dog at a chapel in the Forest of Dean. And the dog was the only one listening. <laughs> 300 young people in a converted warehouse in North Watford, sole survivor. Um, so, <clears throat> and I'm sure we, if we sat 
down and wrote down all the places we've worshipped outside, uh, you know, on the road here. It, it doesn't really matter where you worship, does it? it? It's what's happening there in your heart with God. There's the Quaker silence, the Methodist hymn singing, the extemporary prayer, the Pentecostal enthusiasm. And, you know, your congregation, they wave their white handkerchiefs and dance around the church as this, you know, singing one of those lovely uh, modern or newer hymns that we have. I think you've, have you done that before here? You've danced around the church? Maybe one day. And it, you know, it's all about expressing our worship of God. So it's a commitment. It's a response. Secondly, um, <clears throat> our next one. Will you commit yourself uh, uh, to daily life? And you think, well, you know, what does that mean? Of course, I'm committing myself to daily life. And it, the, the question is more, will you seek the strength of God's spirit as you set the cost of following Jesus Christ in your daily life? And so that's a question to, to each of us each day, really. Um, do we seek the, the strength of God's Pentecostal spirit to witness as Christians each day in, in our neighborhood, in our workplaces, in church? Uh, and Jesus, we know, was a carpenter, wasn't he? Very, very important trade in his time. He fixed, you know, doors, windows, um, tables, chairs. So quite a critical um, role. Uh, I don't, have we got any carpenters here? We have. What a relief. Isn't it? Because we need people who can do those practical jobs. And it's about making connections with daily life. It's not... We come to Kemp's niece to escape the world. And the church is not a spiritual sanatorium in which to escape the world. That is a completely wrong way of thinking about church. It's a place where we bring all our experiences of the previous week or years, and we, in a sense, who we are and our history and our personality, confronted and with the presence of God, isn't it? And somehow in, in that meeting with God, um, we commit ourselves to daily life that follows on when we leave the church service. Jesus always made connections between synagogue and rural life. And we live in a complex world, don't we? There's situations that confuse us and overwhelm us, and especially during the time of covid um, it's thrown all our usual routines up in the air. We say, how do we make sense of this? There are no simple situ solutions or situations, but it's about making connections, isn't it, to daily life? What does it mean to be a Christian or on that journey of faith in 2021 as we come out of COVID? Uh, and some people are very anxious about that, aren't they? And I would say to you, you need courage. You know, you engage with life. That's what Jesus would do. That's what he'd urge his disciples. You know, there are things that make us a bit scared, but sensibly and safely re-engage with normal life. Mother Teresa, uh, she worked in the slums of Calcutta, and she says, love to pray, often during the day, the need for prayer and take trouble to pray. And she says, prayer enlarges the heart until it is capable of containing God's gift of himself. And so what we're doing in worship and in prayer is making ourselves available so that God can, in a sense, live his life through us. The Holy Spirit is like electricity. He won't come in unless you can get out. Tell the Holy Spirit you want to be a channel, not just a consumer of faith. And today will not be an end, but a new beginning. And that's what happened at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit drove the disciples who were in their own lockdown, weren't they? Out through the, the locked doors into the world. And finally, a witness, a signpost. All right, so I think some from the slides is missing. There should be yeah, actually Christian aid image there. I don't know what's happened to that one. So with signposts, and the question is, will you by your witness indeed to the will you witness by word and deed to the good news of uh, God in Christ 
and so bring glory to God. So we witness by our words and actions, don't we? And Stuart stunned 41 of 67 miles. That's pretty good, isn't it? Should you give him a round of applause? Sue and Richard Ward are going to walk 300,000 steps around their home. I'm only kidding. It's only 10,000 steps a day. It's only five miles. So you only have to walk five miles around Kempston every day. Who's, has anybody done that? Or maybe you're up and down your road. Or maybe five miles around Sainsbury's every day. You probably would be taken away wouldn't you? But it's a witness, isn't it? What we say and what we do are totally connected. And I love this in Galatians, it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, not just the church, but we exist for the benefit of our non-members, don't we? A, a community of goodness that seeks to impact the world, that supports people of all faiths and none. Um, that's what we do. And if people would look at Kempston East as a church community and say, those are good people in their own way and in their own efforts, they're trying to bring God's goodness into this community and around the world. Amen? Amen? The witness of our fellowship, Soul Survivor. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Soul Survivor. It meets in a warehouse in Watford. Uh, I've been to a few times, uh, my, my um, girls, used, my daughters used to go there. And it says this, Soul Survivor says this, we want to be a McDonald's church, cheap and cheerful and for ordinary people. If you want to worship with an amazing choir, have liturgy and eloquent Bible teachers, then you're in the wrong place. We're only McDonald's people. We can only be what we are. I think Kentonese is not a McDonald's church, is it? Or maybe not yet. We're not KFC, are we? Kentucky Fried Chicken. Indian Takeaway, ZZ's or Slug and Lettuce. Or maybe we've got a bit of all of that in our worship. Kentonese can only be what the people here make it to be. We are the church, aren't we? A Kempston East church authentic for Kempston East community. A fellowship for ordinary people. So when people look at this church fellowship and they can say, there's a place for me here, even if they wear, wear a bright yellow suit or jeans or colored hair, it doesn't matter. They can say, there's a place for me at this church. So will you come and follow me, which is the last hymn we'll have. It's a simple question, but with profound implications. Becky, Sarah, Philippa and Dom are going to be asked those questions today. And you will be asked a question as well as a congregation. They're on that safari of faith. And safari is the Swahili word for journey, which is a lovely, it's a lovely rich word, safari. There are twists and turns, unexpected places and people to meet. But wherever we go on that safari of faith, we're called to follow Christ, who sustains us through the storms and opens up the doors of opportunities. And whatever we do, may we do it to the glory of God. Amen.